Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney, Dismal DeSantis. We thought we were done talking about it. Apparently not. No, here comes more. Yeah, apparently there was a meeting, I think it was yesterday, yes. at the Reedy Creek building, and uh, some emails were posted, and Everybody kind of knows that Disney, even though they're supposed to be separate entities, Reedy Creek and Disney, that Disney pretty much runs Reedy Creek and, yeah. you know, they, that's their like, puppet for what they do. And apparently some emails came to light that kind of indicate that, which might make it easier for the state to prove, um, you know, I don't want to say collusion, it's not quite collusion, but like that Disney was behind some things they shouldn't have been doing. Yeah, so basically, yeah, Disney is supposed to remain sort of detached from Reedy Creek and in some instances, in this case, obviously, Disney's lawyers were putting uh, Reedy Creek board up to throwing in some of this language that was kind of snuck in at the 11th hour, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and they're finding out that there's some other things came up that uh, apparently they were supposed to mail out a notice. Yeah, that's where they might get them on is the mailing yeah. out notices. However, I do want to clarify that they did post their meeting thing in the Orlando Sentinel. We were trying to figure out which rinky dink paper they put it in. They did put it in the Orlando Sentinel. I saw it. However, if you read it and how it's worded, most people looking at that are going to be like, well, that's just a laundry list of everything they cover anyway. It was very ambiguous about how it was worded. And most people would have looked at that and not thought that meant what it meant. So yeah. I'm just saying. But they did post it. So they did technically have two forums, public forums, and they did post in the paper. So they did do that. Um, however, apparently they were supposed to mail it to homeowners in the area, and they did not do that. Yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of little technicalities that could get Disney in trouble now that it's being pushed. And I think Disney is not used to having anyone push back. Now, there are Republicans who are not happy with Ron DeSantis. They're like, dude, you're going to die on the Mickey Mouse Hill. Mm -hmm. you know. And if you want to be president, this probably isn't People a good look. People are getting tired of it. They're just like, you know, yeah, okay. I mean, they're just getting tired of it. I don't know. I mean, I get where he's coming from. I mean, it's hard. Someone needs to stand up to Disney because they really were abusing powers they're given, they should, you know, abide by the rules like everybody else. And I've seen them many times do things like, you know, legally sue the, the area over their property value appraisals. They, they're like, we don't appraise our own property. Okay, you're right. You don't appraise your own property, but you challenge it every time somebody else appraises it and you sue and, and drag out, drag out stuff in court. So you don't have to pay so much. You don't have to pay as much as it's being assessed at. So, you know. So let's talk about how this meeting went. We've got some pictures, uh, screen captures, I think, that comes from a video from uh, Mickey Views. I yes, I'll give that kid, got Sir Braden, credit. He went to the meetings. He's been going. He's been taping it. He's been, he even admits, like, I'm not a lawyer. And I don't know what this means. I just find some stuff compelling. And I'll, like, chutzpah, boy, go. Respect. Uh, I, I'm glad he's learning this at an earlier age because it took us years to find out exactly what kind of company Disney was. Yeah. If they're actually a, a corporation with some damn good lawyers and they will do anything and everything to get out of paying their fair share. And I want Disney to do better. I mean, people are like, these want Disney to fail. It's like, I don't want no. Disney to fail. I want Disney to be better. I want it to be, I want it to, I want it to be better so that, you know, I, we can go back and not feel so bad about it. I'm still gonna have to go back because it's my job, but you know what I mean? It's like, I want them to be better. I want them to be what they, they tell me they are. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Disney's just, it's not Walt's company anymore. That, that has become painfully obvious. We're going to talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants, guys. Geeky will give you a woohoo if you do. Woo Thank you very much. Uh, go to piratesandprincesses.net for objective Disney news. And uh, yeah, this is coming from the Orlando Business Journal. We'll, we'll, they've got a pretty good summary of what happened during this meeting, and then we'll go out and look at some of these screenshots. So DeSantis's Central Florida Tourism Oversight Board fires multiple salvos. Uh, they do. So this is the meeting that he basically talked about that he was going to threaten to mm -hmm. uh, take more from mm -hmm. them. And, uh, you know, now there's potentially going to be a lawsuit. And no, he's not going to put a prison in front of Walt Disney World, although they keep, that would be all the media kind of keeps funny. running with it, and it's like CNN. I'm like CNN. You are very and, and people are like, oh my god, there's children at Disney because they're not. These people aren't actually out going out and looking what was actually said. And I was like CNN. That's kind of like you know, while loosely factual. That's really, really, really shitty. I'm just well, sorry, but CNN it is. I mean, look, and then we've got CNBC. Uh, Disney tells his lobbyists to step up their fight, and this, of course, is coming from a rival. 
you know, uh, NBC owned by Universal. Well, but to be so. fair, CNBC, though, every time Disney does any kind of announcement, they go to CNBC. So you can't make that argument. They can't say, well, they're their rival. Disney always goes to CNBC to report their shit. Yeah. They're like, well, their one's always getting the exclusives. Yeah, it's kind of weird how that works, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it said the April 19th meeting was the latest round in a boxing match between Disney and DeSantis, this time focused on the board's attempts to shred the legality of Disney's effort to strip the district of its power when it comes to land development. Basically an 11th hour deal for those of you who have been living under a rock. Disney put some language into the um, contract as they were exiting or giving up control of Reedy Creek. Um, it, it wasn't Disney per se, but the Reedy Creek board. It was Disney. Which basically Disney. But, yeah. but you know, um, they had people, were, they were questioning because they said that it had to be a public forum twice yes. that it had to be submitted to a paper. And I'm going to correct that it was. It was, but it still doesn't make it right. It's still kind of crap. And it turned out they didn't do the mailing and some other stuff. So whatever. Yeah. So the lack of mail notice to property owners was one of the opening uh, legal experts identified as a reasoning why Disney's agreement should be null and void. Right. Again, they might have put it in the Orlando Sentinel, but it was not sent to everybody's house like no, apparently it was supposed to, to. And they said, this said something they can't too. They said legal experts said the agreement breaches the law of contracts and any defense that the agreements were part of a previously state approved Rudy Creek comprehensive plan are not legal as the powers granted to Disney in the development agreement and restrictive covenants were not in the comprehensive plan. And apparently you have to have language uh, you know, with a, some kind of plan in place before you can do this and they didn't do that. Yeah, and what they sent out the other day actually was a link to the plan in a PDF, but that's not, you mm -hmm. know, that's not going out to everybody like it was supposed to go out to everybody. Attorneys also, and this is what we're going to talk about. Attorneys also displayed emails from a Disney lawyer that allegedly showed Disney's internal counsel drafted the controversial agreement for Reedy Creek. So this was not the Reedy Creek board. Yeah, they said that was the board own. that drafted it. Disney, you know, we worked together, but Disney had nothing to do with it because they're supposed to be separate entities. Uh, I actually have that. And that was from... Um, Braden, Sir Braden, the Mickey yeah. Views, which you can see, he has a video on it. You can see the whole video if you go out to his video. I took screen captures of it, but I want to make sure I credit him. He was at the meeting and he took pictures of, of the slides. And you can see here, um, this is coming from John McGowan, who is chief counsel at Walt Disney World. Okay, he's their chief counsel. He's sending it to Ed, Edward Milgram, who is the counselor for the Reedy Creek board. Right. And it says that, thanks, Ed. My name, meaning John, is currently at top of the document as a drafter. I am comfortable having my name on it, but from an optics perspective, that is not ideal. And it will be better to have a non-Disney employee be the drafter. Uh -huh. So I drafted it. It's my name on it. And I'm okay with putting my name on it. He wants to change it to this Ed Milgram instead. He said the vocal team do not want to put their name on it, unfortunately, because they are a Tallahassee firm and they do work for the governor, unfortunately. Would you be so conflict of interest, potentially? Would you be willing to put your name on it as a drafter? Would you be willing to lie? Would Ed? you be willing to put your name on it as a drafter? Because apparently it was it was John and this yes. vocal Dis team. Disney's lawyers drafted the Reedy Creek exit strategy and again we've said before disney has some of the best lawyers on the planet and this is a very disney move this 11th hour you know uh what they call it, poison pill that they put in that basically they had control of the district more or less until the last descendant of king charles died yeah. in some ridiculous language like that supposedly there's another thing they snuck in there about the utilities um, for the, another 10 years. Yeah, they were able to set their own utility rates and all this other nonsense. Yeah, you can set your own rates or yeah. whatever So for tax reasons or whatever. So the next slide, we look at... Um, exhibit B. Exhibit B. So here you can see they cross his name out. Prepared by John uh, John McGowan. Yeah. And they like, like Buena Vista, whatever. Then they crossed it out. Edward Milgram. Milgram Law Group, who was representative of... Uh, Reedy Creek. Uh -huh. And then, the, so they put, here's the, this, the declaration of restricted covenants they put through right here. Yep. And here's the whole, the, the document. They yep. changed who wrote it. Yeah. So Disney's lawyers wrote the language and then they told this guy to put his name on it. So it looked like it was coming from a different group. But wait, there's right? more. But wait, there's more. Of course there is. So um, then there was other email. We we're talking in regards. And look, there's a development agreement summary yep. and the agreements that, that they're, they're sending him so that he can use. Said, see attached summary of the development agreement. Also attached is the last version of the agreement for the board members' packages this afternoon. The one that he was supposed to have written, that 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 Edward was supposed to have written. Yeah. Okay. Here's 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 the copies of it, so you can put them in the packages with your name on it. I would also suggest modifying the agenda items. 
basically they modified the agenda of what was going to be spoken. The North not supposed to have anything to do with Rainy Creek. Remember, it's a, it's a separate entity that that, that, yep. that that's a yep. board yep. Yep. That, that that runs <laughs> up for Disney, but Disney themselves as a company isn't part of it. But we can't have DeSantis appoint his own people because no. that's a conflict of interest. No, so next slide. Nice. And then and then here's edit to the talking points for John C. So they were telling the board members what they edited. They gave them the they changed the agenda and gave the talking points to the board member, so that they knew and the new agreement, so they knew what they were allowed to talk about at the meeting. And they said, and some people, I guess Braden said, some people were like saying, oh, that's normal. It's like, not really. It's no, a little suspicious. I'll tell you that. It's they're being coached. So Disney would do this with us when we were on, in media. And it's so funny that, um, and I'm sorry, Braden, you're probably never going to be invited to a cupcake party ever. Uh, that's for, okay. You're better off just doing what you're doing because you're doing a great job. Yeah, you're you're much better off. And frankly, you'll make more money on your own than you will working with them. I, I, I'm very impressed at this point. Go ahead. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah. So when we were on media um, with the Kingdom Insider, uh, they would give me talking points. They literally... They give all of you. You weren't allowed to ask questions outside no. the list of questions you're allowed to ask. But look, make it look like that's your question. Their legal people would... look If we were going to do an interview with somebody or we were going to do uh, you know an article or review or something, certain things, they would actually have their legal department look at it. And make sure everything was fine. And it, I, I had to jump through so many hoops to do anything. We got the name of a, a, an attraction or something wrong. And it wasn't even that big of a deal. We left like one word off the whatever it's going to be. Threw it in an article and we heard from them almost immediately. Yeah, you have to put a tra trademark that, yeah. like this. But yeah, even if you wanted to ask questions and you're in a group of people asking questions, you were given a list of, of approved questions you're allowed to ask, but they tried to spin it that that was your question. Right. But it wasn't. You all had to ask different questions off the list. Right. So it looked like it was organic, but it wasn't. So what I'm trying to say is if they do it with stupid media influencers, right? And they do it with the media and to they control do it with, the narrative. To control the narrative. They're the absolutely optics. they're absolutely gonna do it. They're gonna pull the strings with something as important as this. Yeah. Now do know? I know if this is gonna do anything? Who the hell knows? We don't know. I'm not gonna claim I do. But it's interesting that, you know, they they prove that Disney, who are supposed to be a separate entity from Reedy Creek, mm -hmm. drafted the agreement themselves to give themselves power. Of course they did. And I you cannot contract yourselves because they're going to argue, they're going to argue that if Disney doesn't, if Disney isn't own, isn't running Reedy Creek, because they're saying there's a, board there, they Creek, there's a board there, then they can make a contract with Reedy Creek. But if Disney is actually behind, running Reedy Creek and it's themselves, they can't make a contract with themselves. Yeah. So the, I, I take issue with this next paragraph, by the way. I take huge issue with this. The district's litigation attorney, uh, David H. Thompson, managing partner with Washington, D.C.-based law firm Cooper & Kirk, during a presentation at the meeting, took aim at these actions as to why the agreements may be void, uh, voided and even called Disney's recent actions a caper worthy of Scrooge McDuck. I spent 15 years working on Scrooge McDuck comics. Scrooge McDuck made his money square. He's smarter than the smarties and tougher than the toughies, but he always makes his money square. Disney's doing underhanded stuff. Scrooge McDuck wouldn't have done that. So no, it's not a caper. Worthy. <laughs> it's not a caper worthy of Scrooge McDuck. He's better than that. I don't know. It is very interesting um, that Disney wrote the draft, and they can prove that Disney wrote the draft. That their legal counsel wrote the draft, and that might bite them in the ass. And if that doesn't, the fact that apparently, according to law, you had to mail something out, and they didn't do that. They did the yeah. other things. But the flip side is, on that too, though, if they did do the two meetings, public meetings, and they did put the notice out. Who was sleeping at the wheel at the governor's office and they didn't catch that? We, I mean, to be fair, that yeah. they should have caught that. That's stupid. We have been saying that since the beginning. It's like, who the hell didn't do their due diligence and look at every line? And that's all it takes. All it takes is one line, one phrase in a contract to, to throw a wrench into things. And, you know, if you have to hold it to the letter of the law, so now to undo it, you basically have to be like, okay, well, this, this was never really, you know, valid to begin with. They can't just be like, yeah, we don't like that. We already signed it. We're going to overturn it. They got to be like, oh, no, no, we have to invalidate the whole thing. That's kind of how, how the mm -hmm. law works now. Because they already agreed to it, not looking at it. And I'm like, dumbass, <laughs> yeah. read, read the damn contract. Yeah, they should have read. That was, they that were presented was with that agreement. But they had public, but they had public 
uh, talking about two public meetings about it too. No one went apparently. Right. So you know, I don't know. There's a lot of blame to go around, but this is going to get interesting because they they it was like it's something very hard to prove, but they kind of showed. I mean, whether or not it holds up in court, I can't tell you because I'm not a lawyer nor am I a judge. But it is interesting, and it makes you. It's going to make people go, hmm. Well, those who get to find out about it, because most people will just let's go with what the media tells them. Yeah. And they won't try to find out for themselves, and they'll say, and CNN will say it's one thing, you know, they'll say the sky's bl- blue. No, they'll say the sky's like pink, and everybody's like, oh my god, the sky's pink. The sky's pink. The CNN said so, and if they look out the damn window, they'll see that no, it's blue. Yeah. But CNN said it was pink, yeah. so then looking out the window is hard. So, I mean, just to wrap this up, this is coming from CNBC again, competitor to Disney. So they're probably... Who Disney always goes to every yeah. time they have a news release. I want to uh, point that out. So Republican Florida Senator said Disney had better not fight back. I have a couple... Oh, well, that's kind of, you know, shouldn't say that, but go ahead. Well, wait till you hear what he said. I have a couple of words for Disney. You're not going to win this fight. This governor will. One word of advice for Disney going forward. Let it go. Let it go. Oh... Did, did everybody, just, everybody uses that one, but yes. Let it go. I, I, I don't think either party is going to let it go. No, um, and, and it's biting them both in the ass in yeah, different ways. Is, is. getting bit in the ass public opinion. DeSantis is getting bit in the ass with his run for president uh, because that, now everybody's like, I guess his own party's making fun of him. So, um, but, you know, Disney really, what they did was really not okay. Yeah. In my but, opinion. But this is how Disney does everything. I know. I would I'm like to say I'm surprised. You, this is how they but do But I'm everything. not surprised at all. All so. right. So we're going to wrap it up. We'll keep an eye on this uh, Mickey Mouse show because I'm sure it's it's going to keep going and going and going. Yeah. All right. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.